Welcome to the ninth lecture of the International Marketing Management course. We have covered a lot already and this is the 10th lecture of this course. In the past two lectures, we have studied the different stages in the internationalization of firms. We also learned about the born global firms to understand that it is not necessary for a firm to go through the different stages of internationalization to sell its services to customers in the foreign markets or globally. Furthermore, we also learned about the multi-sided markets. In this lecture, we will cover the role of exclusivity, status, perception, experience and emotions in the creation of luxury brands. So let me first provide an overview of the past two lectures and afterwards we will focus on the key characteristics of the luxury brands to see how they are created. In the next lecture, we will focus on the pricing strategy of luxury brands. So let me first provide a recap of the past two lectures. We saw that when firms expand to foreign markets, the selection of foreign markets must be done carefully based on selection criteria. We saw that in case of Bajaj Motors, the management selected the foreign markets very carefully. For selling their small motorcycles that are 200cc or less, Bajaj Motors focused on developing countries like Nigeria, Philippines and Sri Lanka. These countries are not prioritized by global leaders like Honda, Yamaha and Suzuki which are renowned motorcycle manufacturers. And the results of selling motorcycles in these countries have been amazing. Bajaj Motors produces 2 million bikes annually and exports one third of them to these countries. The sales are continually growing in these foreign markets. So overall, it has been an enormous success for Bajaj Motors. So how Bajaj Motors got it right? The answer is that Bajaj Motors got it right because of their selection criteria. In other words, in these countries, income levels are similar to India. Competition is very low. Suzuki, Honda and Kawasaki are not there as I mentioned already. No need to change or adapt the bikes in order to export to these countries. So risk is lower and there is no need for adaptation that will need considerable resources. And there are no drastic issues with tariffs and regulations in these countries. And most of all, population is increasing so they can leverage on the future growth. So what can we learn from it? From the case study of Bajaj Motors, we learned that management needs to have a clear idea of number one, the filtration criteria, meaning the factors on the basis of which we can select or exclude a market. Number two, the factors that could be leveraged in these foreign markets. For example, increasing population, income levels, lower tariffs or intellectual capital. Number three, the strengths of their company that will help them in getting a considerable market share in these foreign markets. Moreover, we also studied the characteristics of born global firms and multi-sided markets. We learned that a born global firm is a venture launched to exploit a global niche from the first day of its operations. We also saw some interesting examples of born global firms like LinkedIn, Netflix, YouTube and so on. We also saw that many born global firms have a business model with a multi-sided platform at the core. And what is the multi-sided platform business model? We saw that when a firm has a multi-sided business model based on a multi-sided platform, it leverages multi-sided network effects coming from two or more sides of the network. Therefore, when one side of the network grows, this makes the overall platform more valuable for the other side of the network and vice versa. And this triggers exponential growth for the platform business. We also saw that many born global firms like Rovio and Supercell are gaming companies. And the games that they make were available to people from all over the world from day one. People were able to play these games on mobile devices. Therefore, in multi-sided markets, different actors come together to co-create value. For example, in case of YouTube, we saw how advertisers, content creators and the platform owner Google co-create value for one another and how YouTube has transformed into the second largest search engine. In other words, the business model of YouTube is based on a platform for content creators, viewers and advertisers. Here, the dynamics of network effect are multi-sided 
meaning go along multiple dimensions as more content creators join youtube and create videos in different niches the platform becomes more valuable for viewers and advertisers youtube is primarily a two-sided platform running on a freemium model meaning viewers can join the platform for free but to watch videos without ads they need to pay a fee youtube has seen tremendous growth and after it was acquired by google it has grown to an extent that it is not the second largest search engine in the world its total revenue has surpassed 28 billion us dollars which is almost equal to netflix and almost four times that of yahoo now is the time to understand the key traits of the luxury brands we will see the importance of status, brand image, experience, desire, exclusivity, association, prestige and feelings in the creation of luxury brand. And in the next lecture, we will cover the pricing strategies of luxury brands in detail. So let's first explore the way luxury brands leverage the power of experience and desire. The power of experience, desire and association. While walking around in the Bister village in Oxfordshire, UK, I find many people buying luxury goods of top designer brands. As they walk across the designer outlets, their eyes cannot get enough of displayed products like bags, jackets, suits and other luxury items. The whole experience of shopping in Bister Village, for example, the clean tiled streets, well-dressed salesmen, fragrant flowers planted everywhere, and nice seating converges to one sentence in my opinion. Availability of premium products from different high-end brands in one beautiful place called Bister Village, which creates a perception of unmatched, luxurious shopping experience. And the main objective of Bister Village is to fulfill the desires of people, such as feelings of significance and status by providing them with an opportunity to buy the products which will deliver these feelings to them. Let's look at Rolex watches. The power of perception creates an experience of luxury and as a result, the Rolex watches are perceived as the dream watch a man can own. Therefore, it is more like a status symbol for the rich. We can see in the picture that many celebrities are wearing this brand. And the marketing message aims at creating a perception that the most successful, the most talented and most influential people wear Rolex. And look at the marketing messages itself. On the David Beckham photo, living for greatness. On the Roger Federer photo, a crown for every achievement. And the third ad from the right has an even more interesting message. A Rolex will never change the world, we leave that to the people who wear them and so on. This means that the Rolex brand is positioned as a luxury brand which is associated with people who have greatness, who have achieved a lot and created high impact. In other words, someone who pays premium for buying Rolex is in fact purchasing a permission slip into a world where they will achieve their highest potential and will feel great and impactful by owning it. They are not interested in watches with comparable or even better specifications by brands like Yoga Lukud and Omega since they don't give them the feelings and experience they crave. They don't get these looks of envy from other people and they don't get the feelings of higher status. Honestly speaking, even if you ask any Rolex owner to compare the movement, materials and craftsmanship of his Rolex to other brands, in most cases they will have zero interest or almost no knowledge of it. This is not something which motivated them to own a Rolex. They owned it to get a certain feeling and perceived quality as well as craftsmanship based on personality of the brand and not necessarily based on actual technical specifications or functionalities which a watchmaker or someone who services the movements of high-end watches knows and is interested in. Also, you can see that Rolex sponsors some of the best tournaments of sports like golf, Formula 1 racing, tennis and so on. This is for a reason. This is about association which elevates the status of the brand and positions it firmly as a strong high-end brand. In the table, 
We have compared the features and functionalities of Rolex to other watch brands in order to investigate the actual reason behind its brand perception and qualities which makes it so much loved and wanted. Now let's have a look at the table and compare the features of Rolex to other watch brands. The first one is reliability. Is Rolex the most reliable watch on the planet? <laughs> the answer is no. Breitling is more reliable and so is Omega according to experts. Is Rolex the watch with the most high-end features? No. Casio has way more high-end features. Is it the most comfortable watch to wear? The answer is no. It is cumbersome for many people. Is it the most high-tech watch on the planet? The answer is no. Casio along with Apple iWatch and many other watch brands are more high-tech than Rolex. Then, is it the most innovative brand on the planet? The answer is no. Once again, Apple and many other brands are more innovative. Is it the most robust watch on the planet? The answer is no. Breitling is more robust and reliable according to experts. In the end, is it the watch which is made out of most expensive materials? The answer is no. Many brands use similar materials but cost less. Therefore, we conclude that the precise reasons behind the brand perception of Rolex watches, its association, status, legacy and exclusivity and not its functionalities and features. Therefore, it is important to know that people pay premium for feelings and experiences and not for functionality. And now let's explore the importance of status and exclusivity in the creation of luxury brands. Role of status and exclusivity in branding. Let us see how status, exclusivity, association and legacy contribute to the creation of a brilliant high-end brand. It is evident that many other brands with much lower prices far exceed Rolex in terms of functionalities, technologies and features. But then why people give it so much love and want to own it? As mentioned in previous lecture, here are the precise reasons behind the brand perception of Rolex watches. Number one, association. As mentioned before, great golfers, great tennis players and jockeys on it who are famous and wealthy. So, it creates a perception of association with the famous and rich. Number two, status. Always being Wimbledon sponsors and other famous tournaments. So it means that it shares the prestige and status which these tournaments have. Third, legacy. The ads showing the history of Wimbledon and other famous sport tournaments in conjunction with Rolex. Hence, it creates a perception of association with the legacy of these tournaments. This association transcends many generations of the sportsmen which gives the brand its firm place in history, current world and in future. Exclusivity One of the best sportsmen on it and you have to earn it. Now you tell me why won't someone like to be in those shoes and desire a watch which will help them live these moments without being a famous celebrity themselves. Therefore, it is about emotional craving of the same feelings as famous sportsmen celebrities have which gives them an uplift of mood. Therefore, people buy Rolex and other expensive products and services of different high-end brands because they make them feel more important or because they think that other people will perceive them as richer, classier, of higher status, or more professional. Therefore, people buy experiences, feelings and perceptions and not products. Many times you must have heard the phrase people buy people before they buy something from them. And the reason is their brand, status, contribution to a field or image due to their reputation or status. So, if a high-end brand has created a reputation like the personal brand of Tony Robbins, people will happily pay a premium for its products and services. Since Tony Robbins is a pioneer of the personal development industry, his reputation has created a perception due to which people love him. There might be many more knowledgeable people, many professors, many renowned psychologists and even better coaches, but he has a better reputation and therefore more people crave for his services. So when you ask yourself why you buy the services of Tony Robbins even though they cost so much, you justify the price by telling yourself that it is worth the money. 
That is why the tickets for his events sell effortlessly. No doubt his services are excellent, but you got the point. It is a simple and straightforward reality which is underpinned by one fact. It is not a thing, but the thing which people crave for. And what is the thing which people crave for? Of course, emotions and feelings. And now we will have a look at the importance of emotions, meaning how emotions play a key role in motivating customers to pay a premium for the products and services of high-end brands. Emotions versus logic. Remember that buying decisions of high-end products and services are always based on emotions, but they are always justified with logic. And it is also not so much about the value also. It is more about the brand. So, for example, people care for expensive things not because valuable items will help them achieve something faster or perform a functionality differently or more optimally. The fact is that people love costly stuff because they give them a different perspective which invokes and provides them with the emotions which they crave. So let's pretend that a person buys a Ferrari and then another person buys the Lexus Roadster. When it comes to comfort and reliability, Lexus Roadster is better or as good as Ferrari. But the experience which you get by owning a Ferrari is terrific because of the looks that you get from other people, the attention which it grabs and the way its engine sounds. However, if you look at the two cars from a logical perspective, you will find that in the UK, you cannot drive Ferrari over the speed limit on roads. Lexus is more reliable and within the speed limits, it provides more comfort, more space and more reliability. However, Ferrari makes people feel more important since it is a status symbol. Therefore, once again, you must keep one thing in mind. People pay premium for experience and feelings and not for functionality. When it comes to purchasing a car, the main logical reason behind the car purchase is to go from one place to another conveniently and that is why the cars were invented in the first place. However, experience is a combination of feelings such as the feeling of significance, the sense of prestige, the feeling of status and the feeling invoked when people look at you. When you are driving it, or when you go from one place to another in a Ferrari, you feel amazing. Now, if we ask ourselves a question, what does a car do? Our answer will be, a car takes us from one place to another. So the point is that both Lexus and Ferrari are cars and they will help you achieve the same objective now. What separates a car from Ferrari for which people pay such a high price? The answer is that Ferrari is the car. It is a type of car which helps you feel more significant of higher status and wealthier and these are the emotions which people crave for. That is why people love to have a Ferrari. They love it because it is the car which gives them an extraordinary experience full of the emotions which they crave. Therefore, as already mentioned, it is not about service. It is about the service. It is not about a coach. It is about the coach. So that is why it is always important to keep in mind that people pay thousands of dollars for certain services, products, coaches and consultants because they have strong brands which create a particular perception about them in the minds of people. It leads to a straightforward conclusion which is people don't buy the products or services but the emotional state which they want to reach as a result of owning or experiencing them. And now is the time to compare the high-end and low-end brands in two entirely different niches. We want to identify similar patterns while comparing premium and low-end brands in two hugely different market segments to draw meaningful conclusions. Comparing high-end brands and low-end brands in different market segments. We are looking at two different markets and examining the way different brands are positioned in these markets as far as the price points are concerned. We want to investigate the reasons due to which people pay more for high-end and low for low-end products in these two market segments. 
we want to identify or shortlist similar patterns in these very different market segments to draw meaningful conclusions. We have chosen the ladies bag market segment in the accessories market and SUVs market segment in the automobile market. We first look at the ladies bag market segment in the accessories market and seek answer to the question. What do the customers pay for? In other words, what are the deciding factors for the vast price differences between alternative products in this market segment? In this market segment, we have compared three brands, Ted Baker, Karl Lagerfeld and Louis Vuitton. In this table, we have mentioned the reasons of price paid, the products at different price range and then the price paid in the third column. And here are the three bags that we are comparing, Ted Becker, Karl Lagerfeld and Louis Vuitton. So here in this region, which is highlighted light uh, gray, we are mentioning the utility centric price, which is the price paid for functionality, reliability and utility. So all these three bags, if you look at them, they have the same functionality, meaning they are all handbags of similar size and can hold similar items. Then as far as reliability is concerned, all of them are made of calf leather and are very reliable. They can last for years. Then the material, all of them are made of calf leather or cow leather. And for all these different features mentioned over here, the price which a customer pays is 100 to 150 Great British Pounds because with this price, you can go to a shop, you can buy a Ted Backer bag and it has all these things. The functionality, the reliability and the materials which we just mentioned. And all these three are common across all these three different bag brands, isn't it? That is very interesting. But for all of these functionality, reliability and the materials, you can just pay 100 or 150 pounds and get a Ted Backer bag which will last you for a few years, which will be reliable, which will have the same functionality and the material will also be the same as the other two bags which are mentioned over here. Now we come to the emotion centric price. Now, we see that this is the price which is paid for uniqueness, perception, perceived craftsmanship, status, brand perception, scarcity, prestige and other associated emotions and feelings. And if we look at the total price over here for the Ted Backer bag, it is 130 to 200 Great British Pounds. That is the total price. And it has lower perceived value in terms of craftsmanship, status, brand perception, and other emotion-centric traits. But at the other end of the spectrum, we have Louis Vuitton bag, which has a very high price, $1,500 or more. So it has one of the highest perceived value in terms of craftsmanship, status, brand perception, and other emotion-centric traits. Hence, we conclude that the price which is paid for the emotion centric traits is 0 to 1200 pounds. It is 0 pounds for the Ted Becker bag because it just costs 130 to 200 pounds and it provides you with the same functionality, reliability and is made of the same materials as any other bag. But its emotion centric price is 0. And for the Louis Vuitton bag, the utility centric price is 100 to 150 pounds and the emotion centric price is 1200 pounds. Sorry, this is the typo, it should be pounds. And over here we have found that when it comes to high end products, most of the price which a customer pays is for emotion centric trades. Now let's have a look at the SUV market segment in the automobile market. Once again, the main question which we are asking is the same. What are the different deciding factors for the vast price differences between two alternative automobiles in the SUV market segment? We have compared Toyota Land Cruiser Invincible and Rolls-Royce Cullinan in this market segment. Over here we can see once again that the utility centric price is just $55,000 because for both these SUVs, the functionality, the reliability and efficiency are more or less the same. Actually, Toyota Land Cruiser Invincible is more reliable and it is more fuel efficient. But when it comes to the emotion centric price, we see that it is actually the deciding factor for the huge price difference between Rolls-Royce Cullinan and Toyota Land Cruiser Invincible. 
And once again, we see that the emotion-centric price is the price which is paid for uniqueness, perception, perceived craftsmanship, status, brand perception, scarcity, prestige, and other associated emotions or feelings. Because as far as the functionality is concerned, both of them have more or less the same functionality. Therefore, we conclude once again that utility, reliability, and functionality never motivates a buyer to pay a premium for a product or service. In other words, what truly motivates a buyer to pay a premium for a product or service is its uniqueness, perceived craftsmanship, status, scarcity, prestige, and other associated emotions. Therefore, we conclude that emotions execute the sale of a high-end product or service while the logic justifies it. For low-end products and services, emotions have little to no involvement in the execution of a sale. And now the key points of the lecture. Number one, people buy high-end products and services to experience certain emotions which they crave. People pay higher prices for these products and services because they are offered by the world's famous luxury brands, leading industry experts, and best coaches in the world. Number three, emotions execute the sale of a high-end product or service while the logic justifies it. Thank you very much for your time. See you in the next lecture.